Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rory and today I want to talk to you about two exposure tools that I use in the Panasonic S5 camera to make sure that I nail exposure every single time. Now, the Panasonic S5 has got a bunch of tools built into it which make uh, filmmaking incredibly easy. But today, there are two that I specifically want to talk about that I use every single day that I use this camera to make sure that I'm getting a really, really good image. And if you learn these and you use these two, then I guarantee you that you will never get back into the editing suite and kick yourself because you've over or underexposed all your entire day ever again. Now, those two features are the Zebras and the Luminant Spot Meter. So let's talk about the Zebras first. Basically, the Zebras are, uh, you set an IRE level that you want it to appear um, as a visual representation of the screen when you go beyond that IRE level. So to, to understand IRE a bit more, basically zero is absolute black, 100 is absolute white. In the S5, the V-Log peaks at about 98 or 99, I can't remember which one, but basically if you go over that IRE level, then you're losing detail and you can't recover in post. So what I do is I set my zebras at 95. And what that means is anything that is above 95 IRE, is gonna show up as that visual representation on the screen. It means I know that if something has zebras on the screen, I'm gonna lose detail in post and I'm not gonna be able to recover that detail. So if I'm in, like, in a real world setting, I am at the ceremony, it's run and gun, everything's stressful, I've got a camera on a gimbal, like I've just finished setting up the audio and they start playing the music for the bride walking down the aisle. I don't have time to go and set every white balance and make sure all the exposures are correct. I'm literally turning around, turning the camera on, hitting record and away I go. And if I see that there's zebras on the bride's dress, I know that I need to drop the exposure a little bit because the bride's dress is going to be white, which means it's going to be the brightest part of the image. And if I overexpose that, that entire section of her walking down the aisle is going to be useless. So it's a visual representation that you can very easily adjust on the fly to make sure you're getting perfect exposure. The second tool in the Panasonic S5 that I use every single day is the Luminant Spot Meter. So the Luminant Spot Meter is a small square that appears on the screen and it will tell you everything within that box, how many stops under or overexposed it is. Now we know that in V-Log, perfect exposure is about 42 IRE. We know that with skin tones, we want those to be sitting around middle gray, which in V-Log is 42 IRE. So if I'm filming, say, bride prep in the morning, often they're getting ready near a very bright window in a very dark room. I know that I can't preserve the highlights of that window, but I still want to make sure that her skin is perfectly exposed. So what do I do? I turn on the luminant spot meter, I point it at her skin, and if it says zero stops, I know that her skin is perfectly exposed, regardless of if there's zebras showing. Now, how do you use these two in conjunction? Say you're at like a portrait session later on and it's some difficult light, say maybe some like dappled sunlight or, or something similar to that. And they're gonna be in half shade, half sun, and it's something that you can't control. Probably a ceremony is a better example of this. They always put the bride in the sun and the groom in the shade for whatever reason. So you're using the zebras to make sure that no part of your image is overexposed. And if any part of the image is overexposed, you're making a choice as to whether you're happy to lose the details in that. If it's the sky, I'm quite happy to lose the details in that area. If it's the bride's dress, I'm probably going to try to preserve those details depending on the situation. Then you're using the luminant spot meter, which you can move around the screen to look at the skin tones in the image, particularly for a wedding. If the skin tones are overexposed, then you know that you can drop the entire image down a bit and preserve as much detail as you can. If the skin tones are underexposed, depending on how much underexposed they are, you may want to bump up the image a little bit, even at the, even at the risk of losing some of those highlights, but that's a choice that you have to make at the time. I can probably get away with having skin tones about a stop underexposed before I'm worried about introducing too much noise into the skin later on or creating too much work for myself. If it's a, in a ceremony scenario, I may even zoom in a bit to avoid some of the dress that is blown out um, in order to make sure that the entire image is, per is perfectly exposed. So there you have it guys. They're the two tools that I always have turned on and I'm using constantly to make sure that I get perfect exposure, particularly in a run and gun scenario. 
I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.